Hello there, this is Alexander Isar. Today I want to share with you how to use the Mercedes-Benz EPC. That means stands for Electronic Parts Catalog. So, uh, we access it. It runs on Java. There's a information note at the beginning of the program. It says that the deactivation of EPC has begun. This is because of the fact that Mercedes is merging or transferring everything uh, to a portal, internet portal, and it's gonna basically change a bit the way how we see things. But until uh, this program will be uh, obsolete, we can use it safely and uh, with yeah with good use. Let's start. So. Basically, you have the identification number on the top left side. You start from WD, actually from 3AM to the last types of Z9M. Basically, this covers also other uh, identification numbers from other car manufacturers which are part of the Daimler group. What I'm going to cover right now is specifically Mercedes-Benz vehicles. I'm going to start with a C-Class and then go to an E-Class or an S-Class. I'll try to be as uh, fast as possible and stop uh, the unnecessary chit-chatter. So I have over here uh, two VIN numbers out of my vehicles. This is uh, my W203 C-Class. I'm going to click it. And of course, right now you can see that it all it auto fills in what kind of type it's it, MD mode, uh, first car, then it's the designation of the platform of the vehicle, then the platform itself, and then you can choose from the groups. So you have main groups are categorized in engine and transmission and then you have other components which are being let's say considered additional uh, additional features or uh, accessories let's go on on the engine of course by the VIN number oh, and if you select the engine you can now fill see that the engine serial number is filled in First is the type 611, then the subtype 962, then there's the serial number starting from here. After which you can see that the engine is split into a few groups. Again, engine housing, mov moving parts, timing, injection pump, air cleaner, power steering pump, uh, intake and exhaust manifolds. I'm not gonna bore you with the uh, this um, I'm gonna let's say choose engine housing then the subgroup is the design group orientation table and over here you can see that it has a basic diagram it doesn't tell you anything over here you can then go to the engine and over here it tells you as you can see over here it has switched from page one which is the big group to page 2 which is the engine itself over here you have the entire part number for the engine 611 010 4345 that means that the next two part numbers are the ones which replaced the initial ones so basically this one over here was replaced by this one and this one was replaced by this one we can continue switching subgroups either from here or from here. Right now you can have the, a view of the cylinder crankcase, covers, gaskets and kits. The the pictogram itself can be zoomed in or zoomed out, whatever you want to do with it. I basically think it's best it's, if it stays around like this. I have a good view of it. Um, let's say, for example, we want to select this clamping sleeve, uh, which is FN 113, 113. It says over here that 
upon engine rebuild, the quantity needed would be 002 parts. The part number is this, so if you need this component, just this specific component, you take this part number and go to the car parts store and uh, ask the, the guy from there to, to order this component. Of course, uh, in most cases, some components are not able to be ordered through a local vendor, local parts vendor, but in most cases they can be ordered in such way. So basically if you un unselected uh, all the part numbers from this pictogram are being shown again. What you see with uh, dark gray, uh, for example find number 89, 77 and 83 and also 164 and 161, well thing is that these are not valid for the vehicle uh, shown over here. You can only consider that these are not valid because these were not part of the of my engine. Good, moving on. Um, let's say for example that I want to order the oil, oil pan gasket. So you select it and then you see the part number over here. Now if I click the plus you see that uh, there were multiple revisions of the gasket. This was the first revision and as I move down multiple changes have been performed on the gasket. Don't ask me what exactly did happen but I guess that in some cases either the material was changed or either the supplier or something like that. Anyways, whenever you do a repair or a rebuild or something it's best that you choose the, the last part numbers. In most cases they will be uh, covering the initial defects of uh, development. This is valid for all car manufacturers. So yeah, uh, again going through the subgroups you can choose whatever you need and whatever you like. The engine housing, the timing, camshaft, yeah you can see it over here. This is the cam chain tensioner. You have groups, multiple groups, or you can just order the ceiling ring if you wanna. But if you order the chain tensioner, then it comes with the ceiling ring itself. Next would be the tappet, cam follower hydraulic element. This is the bucket, yeah. And then you have in the inside, you have a valve collar and another valve color. It, it says you need 32 <laughs> such components when you rebuild the engine because there are 16 valves per this engine and um, yeah 16 times 2 it's 32. And then you have the spring plate then you have the spring itself intake and exhaust um, exhaust just intake so you have to be aware you have a, as of engine for example this case as of engine 3359084 so i think my engine in most most likely is part of this uh, is going to use this spring over here. So I'm, I'm not going to be able to order, for example, for my vehicle to, to order a valve spring because mine is starting with 5379.20. This is 35, so it's older. This one is older. Mine is a bit newer. Um, yeah. Basically, if I were to go and buy a spring the valve spring I would have to go with this one for the exhaust yeah and this one for the intake they've changed stuff this is the seal valve stem sealing good um, another thing of course this is a very vast program and it has all sorts of intricate corners and I can't 
be able to show you all the details but generally I'm trying to show you exactly how to work with it it's very friendly it's very user friendly and basically you you can learn a lot from it so for example if I were to I don't know uh, go to the transmission I see the bell housing over here transmission case right I can basically do it from here go inside the transmission itself and order some parts anyways a very complex program if I go to the control this is the accelerator pedal it, of course it has multiple revisions if you have issues with the initial pedal control then you have to buy the one from E-Class because the 211 is the E-Class from 2003, 2004 till 2009 something like that this is the updated pedal accelerated pedal wheels of course you can see over here the amount of wheels you can go to substructure front floor you can buy specific body parts if needed you can buy radiators you can buy sleeves you can buy everything what is helpful for me is that this electronic parts catalog has a data card the data card tells you that the sales designation for my vehicle is a C200 CDI order number is this one delivery date it was delivered on the 26th of March 2002 my paint code is 744U brilliant silver metallic it has leather combination plus black anthracite although, although I do not understand why they say this probably because of the um, how to call it steering wheel and uh, gear shift lever those are uh, leather but black and anthracite are textile components on the on the seats and door cards the engine number like I told you transmission number and SA codes these are the extra options if you go to the SA code it will show you exactly what these all three group numbers mean okay the FO text something in German something something very interesting good now going to the other vehicle it will tell you exactly what to do um, you can choose the engine again going on the fuel injection you can now see that we have a visual on the fuel pump we click the find number five and it tells us that the injection pump which is normally a Bosch CP3 it has three revisions the first revision is this one 070401 second revision is this one and third revision is this one anyways mm, this is the the part number for the whole unit and you can buy some small parts if you service the vehicle or if you try to service just the sensors temperature sensor uh, regulator pressure pressure valve um, this FN15 is the connection fitting this is very expensive <laughs> I don't know why it's so expensive because it's a small fitting probably because I don't know and then there's a ceiling ring to it whatever moving on you can see the fuel ramps and you have five, uh, part numbers for the injectors again 
multiple revisions. So for the right bank you have a lot of revisions. For the left bank you have a lot of revisions, three revisions actually. Basically if you were to change all the injectors uh, then you have to stick with these revisions and basically these are Euro 4 injectors they need to be coded whereas on the Euro 3 they do not especially require coding but they do require a class set setting to be performed yes so I guess this sums up the, the intro part of the Mercedes EPC program it helps you find out the right part numbers if you have any other comments or questions about the EPC feel free to type in the comments what exactly you need to find out unfortunately I cannot find parts for you because it's uh, not it's not right for me to give you the part numbers um, I do trust this program but because it's a clone, it's not the original thing, um, I can't trust it with my life. So, if you find an online similar program, you can take the part numbers from there and be careful and uh, double check them with the car parts vendor. This is Alexandre Zar, thank you for watching, hit the like and share and subscribe buttons. Hit the bell uh, notification icon so that you're alerted each time I post. Thank you again. Goodbye.